This video will explore the properties of series and parallel circuits. We will begin by examining how current behaves throughout a series circuit, as well as at junctions in a parallel circuit. We will show how potential difference varies around a chosen closed loop in a circuit. Afterwards, we will analyse the effect of connecting resistors in series in a circuit and connecting resistors in parallel in a circuit. In the following circuit, each component, namely the cell, the lamp and the resistor are connected end to end. Because of this, there is only a single path for charge to flow between the positive and negative terminals of the cell, and this is known as a series circuit. Now let's consider this point P in the circuit. The charge entering point P in a given time interval must be equal to the charge leaving point P in the same time interval as a consequence of the conservation of charge. Moreover, this applies to any point around the circuit. Since there is only one path for charge to flow, and charge cannot accumulate at any point, the current must have the same intensity everywhere around the series circuit. In a circuit such as this one, the path between the positive and negative terminals of the cell splits into different parallel branches. Current can take either path and this is known as a parallel circuit. The points at which the path splits and merges are referred to as junctions and are represented by little black dots on circuit diagrams. If we consider where the path splits, the charge passing from the input wire to the junction in a given time must be equal to the charge leaving the junction to the output wires in the same time interval, because charge must be conserved. So algebraically, the current entering this junction must be equal to the currents leaving this junction. The ratio in which the charge splits between the paths depends on the relative resistances of the two paths. If we now look at the section of the parallel circuit where the two paths merge at a junction, the total charge approaching the junction from both paths must be equal to the charge leaving the junction in the same time interval. The same reasoning can be extended to any number of input and output wires, and this is known as the junction rule. This rule states that the sum of the currents into a junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction and is a consequence of conservation of charge. Along with the junction rule, there is a loop rule which relates to the conservation of energy in a circuit. If we consider the following series circuit, the motion of charge carriers around the circuit occurs due to the potential difference between the terminals of the cell. Charge carriers gain energy from sources of potential difference because work is done on them. But charge carriers also lose energy in other components such as resistors because they do work on the components. Moreover, the loop rule states that for any closed loop around a circuit, the gains in electrical potential energy of charge carriers from sources of potential difference must be equal to the total losses of potential energy by charge carriers in other components in the loop. This is because energy must be conserved and there are no other ways for energy to be transferred into or out of the circuit. Let's apply the loop rule to the blue loop in this series circuit. The only source of potential difference in this loop is the cell, which has a voltage V. So the gain in electrical potential energy per unit charge is equal to V. The total losses of potential energy per unit charge in this loop will be caused by both of the resistors. Specifically, the drop in voltage in each resistor will be equal to the potential difference across each resistor, which we will denote as V1 and V2. This is a series circuit, so we know that the current in each resistor is the same, which we will denote as I. By using the definition of resistance, the potential difference across each resistor must be equal to the current multiplied by its resistance. After making these substitutions for V1 and V2 into this equation, we can see how the loop rule can be used to relate the voltage of the cell to the current in the circuit and the resistances of each resistor. We can use the loop rule to simplify circuits with more components. Consider this circuit where we have three resistors of different resistances connected in series. 
they are in series as they are connected end to end, and there are no junctions in the wire connecting any two resistors. Therefore, we know that the current in all of the resistors will be the same, and we can calculate the potential difference across each resistor. Using the loop rule with this loop around the circuit, we can obtain the following expression that relates the voltage of the cell to the potential difference across each resistor. Suppose instead that we can replace the three resistors in series with a single equivalent resistor with a resistance Rs that will result in the same current around the circuit. This circuit has a single cell and a single resistor, so the potential difference across this resistor is equal to the voltage of the cell. If we now compare these two expressions, we can see that the total resistance of three resistors in series is equivalent to a single resistor with a resistance equal to the sum of the individual resistances. What we have just discussed can be extended to any number of resistors connected in series. In particular, for a circuit that contains a single cell, the voltage of the cell will be equal to the sum of the potential differences across each resistor from the loop rule. We showed that the current in the series circuit must be the same everywhere, so the current in each resistor must also be the same. Because of this, the resistor with the greatest resistance will have the proportionally greatest potential difference across it. Furthermore, for any number of resistors in series, the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistances. Because of this, adding resistors in series will decrease the current leaving the cell. We will now revisit the parallel circuit that was introduced earlier in this video. These resistors are connected in parallel because the right ends of each resistor are connected at the same junction, and the same is true for the left ends. There is no resistance between the terminals of the cell in each junction, so the two junctions must have the same potential difference as the cell. We can then see that both resistors must have the same potential difference across them. We also know that the current entering the right junction must equal the current leaving the left junction by conservation of charge. In particular, if we have a current I1 in resistor R1, and a current I2 in resistor R2, then from the junction rule, the current entering the right junction, I, must be equal to the sum of these two currents. Similar to resistors in series, it is possible to replace a network of parallel resistors with a single resistor of an equal resistance. Using the blue loop, the gain in electrical potential energy is due to the voltage of the cell V, and the loss of electrical potential energy is due to resistor R1 only. These can be equated to each other, and we can get an expression for the current going through resistor R1. A similar procedure can be used with the green loop to get an expression for the current I2, and we can do the same for the current in the single resistor circuit. We can now substitute these expressions for the currents into the junction rule. By cancelling out the voltage of the cell, we find that the sum of the reciprocals of the two resistors is equal to the reciprocal of the single equivalent resistor. This expression shows that the total resistance of two resistors in parallel is smaller than any of the individual resistances. Again, we can extend these observations to any number of resistors connected in parallel. For a circuit that contains a single cell, the potential differences across each resistor will be the same, and equal to the voltage of the cell. From the junction rule, the current coming into the junction will be equal to the sum of the currents in each branch of the circuit. In particular, the branch of the circuit with the smallest resistance will carry the proportionally greater current. But if all the resistors have the same resistance, then the current in each branch will be the same. Furthermore, in parallel combinations of resistors, the reciprocal of the total resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. In practice, this shows that adding resistors in parallel increases the number of paths for charge to flow, and decreases the total resistance of the circuit, and will therefore increase the current leaving the cell. 
We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. We introduced two rules that govern the behaviour of current and potential difference in electric circuits. The junction rule stated that the sum of the currents into a junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction, and this is a consequence of the conservation of charge. Then from the conservation of energy, the loop rule stated that the total gains in electrical potential energy in any closed loop of a circuit is equal to the total losses of electrical potential energy. These rules allowed us to examine circuits containing many resistors connected in series and in parallel. Of particular note, we saw that for a series combination of resistors, the current in each resistor is the same, while for a parallel combination of resistors, the potential difference across each resistor is the same. Furthermore, connecting resistors in series increases the total resistance of the circuit, while connecting resistors in parallel decreases the total resistance of the circuit as deduced from these expressions. This now concludes our video on series and parallel circuits. Thank you for watching.